Welcome back. Well, I've decided I wanted to show you a little project I started when I was six years old. This is a little wooden house I made out of kindling. And uh, it's made entirely out of scrap, as you can obviously tell. When I was six years old, I didn't have any carpentry skills whatsoever. Um, I'm not kidding. I mean, look at this thing. I had no tools. I had just my bare hands and a bottle of glue and some kindling and a lot of free time. <laughs> this thing has gone through many changes over the years. Um, it's, being, it's about 19 years old this year, and uh, I made this in, no, I want to say November, because it wasn't snowy out yet, but it was cold enough to, to where we needed kindling for the, um, for the coal stove. But anyway, a few little things I want to point out. Originally, it was painted brown, um, and the, the front wall was here, where this little doorway was. The wall came up to the ceiling, and this was the opening. And when I was seven, I was given a uh, little woodworking kit. I think it was the Billy Builder's working kit, woodworking kit. It came with a coping saw and some planks of what I believe to be cedar. And what I had done was I, I figured I could, because it, the entrance was very uneven, because I didn't make this with any tools, so the wood was all whatever. It broke. <laughs> I just broke the wood by hand and glued it together. So I figured I could make a more precise opening by just ripping that all off, and I built this wall as really crappy as it looks. But to me, that was awesome. It's interesting to note that um, this was not intended to look like a Flintstone house, but it, it actually kind of does. Um, the sloping roof and everything. Um, but a few things I discovered while building this as a kid was that tissue paper and glue makes an excellent um, filler material to fill in gaps. Um, I made this, I think, when I was about seven or eight years old, I discovered that. And I filled in all the gaps between the pieces of wood that didn't quite fit right. And I also built this here. This is like the biggest section I had to fill in. And uh, that was it. Um, oh, when I repainted it, it was green and brown. The building was all brown. And the bottom was green. It's still green a little bit. You can see my handwriting. That's from when I was six. I decided <clears throat> after I got a paint set for Christmas when I was seven, I would repaint the whole thing. And it turns out there wasn't much of each color, so I had to use about nine different colors to cover the whole thing. And <laughs> Funny how that came out. One thing about... Uh, and when I was six years old, the only way I knew how to make holes in wood was with a, um, I had a, like a screwdriver with a threaded end. I'm not sure what its intention was, um, but it was a, it came in a really cheap Chinese tool set I had. And I drilled a hole through the roof for no apparent reason with that tool kit. Um, and I drilled a hole in the back here. But then I realized I could fill in the hole with glue, and that's when I discovered the tissue paper thing. And I filled in all the little holes with with Elmer's glue. Oh, another thing. Um, right here, there was a porch made out of toothpicks. I drilled holes in the base and put toothpicks and made like a little picket railing kind of thing. And uh, I ripped that off years ago. The last time any modifications were done was about 1992. When I was in second grade, I think. Um, so this is a good example of some of my very early handwriting. Welcome. That used to be the... Because this was the entrance. <laughs> the inside is painted almost a fuchsia. And uh, because I didn't have the ability to paint inside, I ended up painting the areas I could see with a brush. And when I moved the door from here to here, well, of course, you can see that wasn't intended to be that way, so. Well, I just figured I'd 
share that with you all. This is probably the very first woodworking project I ever worked on, or started, or did. <laughs> very first. Made without any tools, a bottle of glue, and that was it. And then the last woodworking project I ever worked on was this wall. I actually built this wall from scratch. And I think I've got a video on this on YouTube somewhere. But uh, when I bought this condo, there was nothing here. It was just a, an open rail like the one down there. That's all it was. And I figured I could do something with that. So I took this. I, I actually, the railing is still here. I built around it. Um, I studded it. I wired it up. Sheet rocked it. And called it a wall. But there's um, The reason I built that was so I could put my computer museum over here and still have power. As you can see, there's outlets. There's two double gang outlets, one here, one there. And that gives me ten outlets on my circuit, which is the, the maximum you can do legally. And uh, I think the next thing I'm going to do is add a, um, a countertop from here, from this wall here, all the way. And then I'm going to get rid of these folding tables, and that'll be more of a professional permanent fixture. And that bookshelf will probably move somewhere else, but that's my plan. And it all started with this little, tiny, crappy-looking house. <laughs> 